SpaceX's orbital refilling system would be dead in the water without this ingenious solution. Every Starship test flight reveals new problems, and that's actually a good thing. It shows the vehicle is being pushed to its limits, uncovering exactly what still needs work. But Flight 9 exposed something more serious. The RCS system, responsible for attitude control, became unstable mid-flight. That's no minor glitch. It directly threatens the viability of Starship's future refueling missions. In response, SpaceX quickly came up with a bold upgrade, hot gas thrusters. Not only could this solve the RCS issue, it may unlock a whole new level of control for in-orbit maneuvers, essential for docking, refueling, and even Mars landings. So, what exactly is this system, and why could it change everything? Let's break it down on today's episode of Alpha Tech. During Starship's Flight 9 test in late May, we all saw the upper stage, Ship 35, lose control during re-entry. The root cause was traced to a liquid methane leak, which led to unstable pressure in the propulsion system. What's more concerning is that this failure directly impacted the Reaction Control System, or RCS, the system responsible for orienting and stabilizing the ship in space. Its already limited performance, made worse by the pressure drop and some design flaws, caused the vehicle to spiral out of control. Without a functioning RCS, the ship couldn't maintain its flight attitude or carry out any corrective maneuvers. And that's a major problem, especially for future missions involving on-orbit refueling, where precision control is absolutely critical. So how does this system actually work? Well, the RCS is designed to produce small but precise bursts of thrust in any direction, allowing for fine adjustments throughout the flight. These thrusters also create torque, which lets the spacecraft rotate around its axes to control its orientation. A typical RCS setup includes a mix of large and small thrusters, giving the vehicle both coarse and fine control, depending on the mission's needs. RCS systems generally fall into two categories, cold gas thrusters and hot gas thrusters, the latter being what we're about to dive into next. But first, let's take a quick step back. Earlier Starship prototypes were already equipped with cold gas thrusters. From Starhopper all the way to SN15, they use this simpler system. These thrusters work by releasing compressed gas, usually nitrogen, through nozzles to generate thrust. Cold gas thrusters are simple, reliable, and relatively cheap, which makes them ideal for small spacecraft or for attitude control. But there's a trade-off. Their performance is limited. They typically deliver a specific impulse of just 50 to 80 seconds, which is actually pretty low when it comes to keeping a big spacecraft stable in orbit. Back in 2021, while giving Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, a tour of Starbase, Elon Musk revealed that SpaceX planned to equip Super Heavy with cold gas thrusters, while Starship would get Methalox hot gas thrusters instead. When Tim asked why not just use hot gas thrusters on both stages, Elon admitted that setup wouldn't really be ideal for Starship. Strangely, after that interview, hot gas thrusters were never mentioned again and haven't shown up in any of SpaceX's official updates since. Instead, something else started to pop up on both Super Heavy and Starship. Extra Ullage Vent Ports Ullage gas refers to methane or liquid oxygen vapor coming from the propellant tanks, and it suggests that SpaceX is using that gas for the RCS. That's actually a smart move. It's not just convenient using onboard propellants, but these systems also offer slightly better performance, with an estimated ISP of around 70 to 100 seconds. That's a step up from nitrogen-based systems. In fact, even though it hasn't been officially announced, this move pretty much confirms that SpaceX is borrowing the idea straight from Falcon 9. That rocket also uses Ullage gas for its RCS, mainly to reorient the booster before disposal by venting gas to rotate it into the right position. Technically, this type of thruster works much like a cold gas system. It produces thrust simply by opening valves and releasing pressurized gas with no combustion involved. And while it's still called cold gas, the ullage gases like methane and oxygen can actually be warmer due to boil-off pressure, which slightly improves thrust efficiency while staying within safe tank limits. Just like on Falcon 9, this setup doesn't use a separate high-pressure nitrogen tank. Instead, it draws gas directly from the main propellant tanks. But the thing is, this approach isn't exactly the best solution. Like I mentioned earlier, cold gas RCS thrusters usually have a pretty low specific impulse, somewhere around 50 to 100 seconds. 
and they rely on the main fuel tanks, which are complex to design and tricky to keep at safe pressure levels. Any leak or failure in those tanks can knock out the entire control system, exactly like what we saw during Flight 9. A pressure loss in the methane tank ended up crippling the RCS, which couldn't vent oolage gas properly to stabilize the vehicle. And, well, we all know how that turned out. Which is why, right after Starship Flight 9, SpaceX quickly rolled out a plan to switch to hot gas RCS thrusters. Basically, hot gas thrusters work like tiny rocket engines. They burn either monopropellant or bipropellant fuel inside a combustion chamber to generate thrust. They're way more efficient than cold gas thrusters, with a specific impulse in the range of 250 to 300 seconds, making them ideal for RCS applications. SpaceX's hot gas thruster concept for Starship builds on their expertise with Raptor engines, using methane and oxygen, or methalox, as propellants. These can be stored as either high-pressure gas or as liquids. If implemented, this system could offer three to five times the efficiency and much stronger thrust compared to cold gas thrusters of the same size. That's a big deal when you're trying to control massive vehicles. We're talking hundreds or even over a thousand tons in orbit, especially for something like Starship's orbital refueling configuration, which, when fully loaded, could weigh up to 1,700 tons. Of course, there's no doubt that hot gas thrusters work. They have already been proven on the space shuttle. That vehicle was equipped with a full RCS system using 44 hot gas thrusters, split into two types 38 primary thrusters, each producing around 870 pounds of thrust, and six vernier thrusters, which were much smaller, producing about 25 pounds of thrust each. These thrusters were located in three main sections, the forward RCS pod near the nose, and two OMS pods, orbital maneuvering system, at the rear. Thanks to this setup, the space shuttle was able to carry out precision maneuvers, like docking with the ISS or servicing the Hubble Space Telescope. The 25-pound Vernier thrusters were especially useful for fine-tuned adjustments during close approaches, where precision really mattered. That said, this kind of system isn't as easy to integrate as Starship's current RCS. Supporting hot gas thrusters requires a dedicated high-pressure feed system, including separate fuel and oxidizer tanks. For test flights, these might be housed in independent tanks mounted somewhere inside the vehicle. Still, the potential advantages of this setup are hard to ignore. First off, it doesn't rely on pressure from the main tanks to function. So if there's a leak like what we saw in Flight 9, the vehicle could still maintain some level of attitude control, offering a better chance of recovery. And thanks to their higher efficiency, hot gas thrusters need less propellant to do the same job. Plus, they deliver way more thrust compared to nitrogen or even helium-based systems, making them far more effective for orbital maneuvers or keeping the vehicle stable during windy landings. It's still unclear whether SpaceX will implement this system on the remaining two Starship Block 2 vehicles, Ship 37 and Ship 38, but chances are they won't. It's more likely that hot gas RCS will only be introduced starting with Starship Block 3. Just to be clear, when I say Block 3, I'm referring to their 142-meter-tall version of Starship, not the 150-meter version we talked about before. That taller design has already been scrapped by Elon Musk. Block 3 is a major upgrade of Starship. It features increased height, a much larger propellant capacity, over 1,800 tons just for the upper stage, and an estimated payload to LEO of around 200 tons. It'll also be powered by nine Raptor 3 engines and equipped with Methalox hot gas thrusters to improve RCS performance. When fully fueled in orbit, the Starship upper stage will weigh between 1,800 and 2,120 tons, requiring four to six tanker flights to top it off. The addition of hot gas thrusters will significantly improve attitude control, which is absolutely critical for orbital refueling and precision landings. As Elon Musk put it, it's kind of like aerial refueling for aircraft, except in this case, it's orbital refueling for a rocket. And that's something that's never been done before. But compared to Starship Block 3's orbital refueling, aerial refueling is actually much simpler. It takes place within Earth's atmosphere, using kerosene-based fuel, and relies on skilled pilots and specialized equipment. 
Meanwhile, Starship has to transfer ultra-cold liquid methane and oxygen in microgravity while flying at orbital speeds of around 28,000 km per hour. The process also requires careful alignment and settling of the propellants using the RCS, whether it's ullage gas or hot gas thrusters. Doing that in the vacuum of space with two massive vehicles moving at insane speeds is a whole different level of complexity. That's why Starship's RCS, whether based on ullage gas or future hot gas thrusters, plays such a critical role. But RCS isn't the only approach to precision maneuvering in space. Another proven solution, known for both reliability and strong performance, is the hypergolic engine, a completely different kind of thruster. These engines use propellants that ignite instantly upon contact, and SpaceX has plenty of experience with them, particularly in the launch escape system on the Dragon spacecraft. The main advantage of hypergolic propellants is that they remain liquid at room temperature, and engines that use them are extremely easy to ignite reliably and repeatedly. While some large hypergolic engines and launch vehicles use turbo pumps, most rely on pressure-fed systems. In these setups, an inert gas like helium is used to pressurize the fuel and oxidizer tanks, pushing the propellants through valves and into the combustion chamber. Since the propellants ignite instantly upon contact, there's no risk of unburned fuel accumulating, which could otherwise lead to catastrophic ignition events. However, traditional hypergolic propellants are highly corrosive, toxic, and even carcinogenic, which means handling and storage require expensive safety procedures. In short, using nitrogen or hypergolic propellants introduces a major problem. They require additional fuels that aren't available on Mars. Hypergolics, in particular, are hazardous to handle and complicate post-landing operations. They also can't be refueled in space or on Mars. In contrast, Methalox hot gas thrusters can recharge their gas tanks by vaporizing the cryogenic propellants already stored on board. Since Starship is designed to refuel on Mars using in situ resources ISRU, relying on methane and oxygen for its RCS makes the system far more sustainable. That's why Starship's long-term design aims to rely only on resources that can realistically be produced on Mars within the next 30 years.